Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this 15th anniversary of ITW. I hope you've had a busy day, fruitful day, um, and continue to book meetings over the course of the next couple of days as well. We've been reconnecting all parts of the industry. It's good to see all your faces, um, and I hope you're making new connections and old. So next up, we've got a panel exploring the metaverse, which is part of the service evolution track here. And before we begin, though, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors, particularly our Diamonds, AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, STC, and Telefonica for making this all possible. So I'm going to stop talking now. We have Eli Scher, chairman at OpenIX, and many other <laughs> endeavors as well. Uh, so without further ado, over to you, Eli. Thank you very much. Oh, that's a little too close. All right. Got the thumbs up from the back. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, thank you, Chris, for uh, allowing us to come and share our views. Um, we're going to talk about the metaverse today. Um, what is that? I don't know. Let's talk about that first. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about uh, what our companies do and how that's relevant uh, to the metaverse. And hopefully, that'll be interesting and potentially stimulate some conversations. Um, my name is Eli Shear. Uh, I'm the chairman of OpenIX, uh, which is an internet infrastructure standards body. We set standards around data centers and internet exchange points, as well as edge data centers. Um, and really, our guiding principle is to promote uh, access to interconnection um, and evolve the internet in an open and fair way. Um, with that, I will allow each of my panelists to introduce themselves and their company. Thank you, Eli. My name is Rashid Al Ali. I'm from EN uh, Company. We look after, I mean, a variety kind of uh, business, being data, roaming, voice. We are a telecom that's running in the Middle East, and we have around 16 operations across the globe, operating in Asia and uh, in GCC and the north side of Africa as well as uh, west side of Africa. Uh, personally, I look after data business, and uh, my intention behind the metaverse, it comes of the cooperation and the elaboration that I do within the company, uh, things related to digitalization, gaming, and uh, virtual reality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marcello. Uh, I'm uh, from Italy, but I live in Hong Kong, and I work for AGC Global Communication, which is a global telco integrator with the uh, edge uh, network in uh, Asia, specifically. Uh, when I talk about Asia, uh, it's Hong Kong, which is our HQ, and Singapore, and as well as the emerging markets in uh, uh, Asia, which is uh, markets with a high number of the high balls, and uh, so a lot of users for the metaverse with, we are going to talk about today. Uh, I'm the head of the OTT and the uh, Edge ecosystem, so looking forward to this discussion and see what comes up. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amar. I'm with Meta, so um, uh, it's the not, the not short for Metaverse. So uh, <laughs> at Meta, so we, um, we provide a family of applications and products uh, with a common theme of connecting people. So if you think of um, between WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, um, are all you know communications platforms, and then also we have our um, our Meta Quest platform, uh, which you know is a virtual reality um, product, and also you know still it's still focused around connecting people, and um, and it's fairly closely related to you know enabling some metaverse um, experience in the future. So hi, I'm Vijay Kartikeyan. I'm the uh Founder and CEO of Swami Media. Um, we provide a gaming and esports platform for telecom operators to enable them to participate in all that and say, bringing the gamers and the publishers closer together and enable them to gamify and take part of all that. We think it's a big one, which is very important for uh, this discussion. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting, right? Because I think we have. Um, almost a complete service stack represented here on the, on the stage. Um, and so I think it will be interesting for us to kind of define first, what is this thing that we're seeking? What is this metaverse? 
um, that we're building toward. Um, you want to tee it off? Oh, of course. Although I'm a little bit, I mean, I should be the last one to speak. <laughs> As I'm, I mean, the background I come from is telecom. But I mean, see, uh, I'll make it very simple. My understanding for the metaverse, it's another revolution for the customer experience and the virtual reality. What I can see that it is not something started recently as we, what we can feel. Uh, the metaverse for me, it is something that started since uh, the active world, if you remember 1995, mm -hmm. or the second life when it came in 2000, early 2000. So with the revolution that is happening in the social media, that what we can see, it is a matter of how we can lift this up where the customer experience will be enhanced. So the world of metaverse, it's another definition for the virtual reality with enhanced kind of experience. This is the way that I can see it. Okay, interesting. Marcella, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, uh, just adding on what Rashid just said, uh, I, I, I believe it in, from telecom, especially telecom perspective, is uh, just an evolution of the internet. Mm -hmm. which uh, allows uh, these immersive experiences and opens the door to uh, tokenize the economy, which is uh, completely a new stock, a new world, right? Okay. And, but I think people, they, they say, when will happen, when will happen? Uh, for certain extent, it already happens, especially if we have those applications which are in the middle between the physical world and the virtual world. So uh, we, we, we have seen, we have already some real examples and this will continue to evolve through the convergence of finance, technology, and, uh, and so on. Mm. Okay, Amar, how do you see it? Yeah, so I feel like we're going to build off each other's answers. So I think Marcelo, you know, bringing up the whole um, evolution of the internet is a key um, aspect where if you look at it, the first generation of the internet was us sitting, you know, behind a, you know, computer with a CRT tube, and it was really slow, and you had to hear all sorts of annoying sounds before you got connected onto your through your AOL disk, and um, you know, it was a fixed internet. The next generation was this mobile internet, right? So, um, with phones now, like we take it for granted, but anywhere we go and everywhere we go, the internet is accessible and available to us. Um, so with the metaverse, it's really, you know, this next step in the evolution of the internet where, um, you know, some of the key, I'd say, attributes that come to mind are immersion. Um, by immersion, meaning today you, you look at the internet, right? So you look at the phone screen, you look at your, you know, um, computer screen. In this, you know, next generation of the internet, you are surrounded, you know, by, mm -hmm. by your your part of the experience, um, you're, you're immersed in it. Um, and another key feature of it's going to be presence. So earlier, as I said, a lot of you know, what we work on is about you know, connecting people. Um, what better way to be connected than to be able to experience that when you're talking to someone, they might be on the other end of the globe, but you literally can see them as if they were there right in front of you, not in two dimensional but in real like presence, so where you can feel like that person is there. Imagine that experience for you know, a grandparent with their grandchild uh, to be able to have that and be able to see each other you know, and, and feel, feel that um, presence um, immediately. Really interesting, yeah. I think I agree with this in evolution, but it's not a new thing. I think for the audience, uh, metaverse is a term. Uh, it is coined by Neil Stephenson novel called Snow Crash in 1992. Right? So then in 2011, there's Ready Player One by Samuel uh, Klein, uh, where it's kind of made it even uh, better, enhanced. Uh, and we had uh, 2013, sorry, we had uh, Second Life. So, so it, it, the whole idea of virtually connecting communities, digital communities, people kind of have a second life and go and have it. It, it has been evolving, if you look at uh, Minecraft, if you could, uh, look at Roblox, all of these, uh, you know, that it goes there. But where the next evolution I see is connecting this virtual with the physical. So give me an example. Like, as an example, let's say you go into a, a store in a metaverse and kind of dread, you know, you can actually try out all the stuff in metaverse, select everything, and pay there, and that dress actually shows up, or the, the chair shows up in your house. So the, 
connection of that virtual to the physical, that's going to be the next evolution. And that's where I see that. I, I think that's really interesting. The, the immersion, right? It's, it's that connection and the blending of real and virtual, um, which potentially is the end game, right? That's where we're going. I guess, you know, I would sort of pose the question, how does this differ from edge, right? People are out there talking about edge infrastructure all the time and saying, we're pushing more content to the edge. Is this the same thing? or? Does the metaverse need edge, or what is the relationship there? Yeah. See, what, what, what I can see, the, to be able to perform the metaverse in a way what is promising, being uh, for gaming or being for uh, a very simple designer uh, or even video kind of conferencing, you have to be very close to the, your eyeballs okay. to be able to deliver the experience that your customer is expecting with the quality that enhance the, the, the metaverse promising kind of feelings as well. So therefore, what, 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 what we said or what Virg, uh, Vijay was saying that this kind of revolution, it is not something that has started recently. It has started sometime in 1992, 1995. But what is the issue at that time? The time the software and hardwares and the technology of delivering the infrastructure kind of service was not yet at the level to be able to deliver kind of experience. What we are experiencing now is totally different. So imagine now, we were, a couple of years ago, we were talking about cloud, cloud, cloud. Now, for the last three, four years, we are only talking about how to enhance the edge clouding. So being an edge, and of course we do have a limitation, even with our edge capability in, our, uh, in, in some of those hardwares. But imagine when the 5G will be there available, with the M2M and the edge capability. The metaverse will go to a place which I always try to stop myself not to think to where it can reach. But I believe the technology that we have, being a telecom enabler or facilitator, or being even, even an, 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 for example, an application kind of uh, a CDN, we almost reach to a level, uh, not from the capability point of view only, also from cooperation point of view. I mean, imagine during uh, early 2000, when, when the CDN picking up the, f the, the, the market, there was a mixture of accepting or not to accept between the telecom and the CDN business. Yeah, right. But with what we went through it and the way that we really monetize that and a very good business model that benefit all the triangles being customer or infrastructure or application software kind of providers, I think we have enough experience now how to cooperate Mm -hmm. and enhancing that kind of level to be able to enhance this revolution. Now again, I, I, I always try to stop myself of thinking where it will reach. Yeah. But it is a wave that already started. Yeah. It is a wave that involving a lot of business sectors, which is very much important. And I can see the inflation is happening big time. Uh, I mean, uh, the software companies are happy. Yep. CDN's company are happy. Telecom companies, mm -hmm. they back to, I mean, uh, six years before, we were questioning ourselves, should we keep investing in submarine cable or not? Right. Now there is no one can question this. Right. We, right. we have to. So the edge, it is part of the ecosystem to be able to enable the market intelligence, the, the customer experience mm -hmm. of what specification that we need to reach. Okay. So we don't know exactly where we're going. We know it needs to be close to where the users are, right? Um, Marcello, where are we today? Like, where are you deploying the bulk of hardware and, and network for that matter? Yeah. Um, how close are we to those users? And then the next question is, how close do we need to be to create the immersion? Yeah. Uh, well, that's an interesting question. Uh, about network, uh, because we are a, a network provider, the funny thing about telecom is that, uh, yeah, they can put infrastructure near the edge, near the high balls, 
but sometimes the telco themselves to monetize, they can choose a route which goes all the way from LA to uh, New York and then back to San Diego, which is close, rather than choosing the route which is best for the highball, just because uh, uh, it makes more sense uh, commercially and financially for themselves, right. rather than from the users, right? So uh, we really need to uh, optimize this route. Uh, this is the uh, direction uh, that we are taking, especially in the difficult markets in the Asia, emerging markets, where there is still uh, monopolies uh, of the, the, the telecos there. Mm -hmm. And we try to not break, uh, but to, uh, mix the, uh, to, to, to push this content to the edge in a, a more efficient way. This is number one. The second thing, uh, which I think is important, is that with the metaverse, the, the main shift we have is that from centralized content, centralized platform, in the metaverse, uh, the users, they can create their own content. Right. So this is uh, another, I think, is going to be an even bigger uh, uh, challenge. Yes. Because uh, if I'm a user, I create my own content there, must be created there, it's not that you can go back to the traditional uh, routing and engineering. Right. Oh, Imagine yeah. if it had to go back to LA, back to New York, yes. back to LA, and back Which, to San Diego. Right. And everything's happening there. It's right. it, it's it's ridiculous. But uh, from the guys that they build the metaverse, they 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 give these things for granted. But they need to understand that it's all network behind and mm -hmm. investments and. Yeah. So so it sounds like today, we're still picking off low hanging fruit, so to speak. Right. We're still just enabling efficient routes, logical routes, that yeah. they should be taking. That, you know, potentially is going to allow for greater content, uh, content delivery, right? You're pushing it closer to the edge, but you just said it, this new model imagines that we're also creating content at yes. the edge, which can then be contributed. What do we need for that, Amar? How far away are we from that? Yeah, so, I mean, um, I like to even look back, you know, it's, it's easier to look at history and know where we came from. Um, it's, you know, we all can make predictions and you sure. know, some of them, I think, become likely to happen. But if, if it's interesting, we're at here actually, you know, in, not in DC, but we're close enough. And the first interconnection point started here. So May East started here actually 30 years ago. It was in 1992. So 30 years ago, you had one interconnection point um, then over the next couple of years, um, there were four. There was May West, um, then I think one in Chicago, um, and I don't remember where the other one was. So there were four major, in, or New York, yeah, it was the fourth. So, um, and then if you look at it, even after over two decades in the U.S., you really had like nine interconnection points. Right. Yeah. There were the nine core cities. Um, now in 2022, you could maybe argue there's like 14. Um, so what does that mean? Why is that relevant? These interconnection points allow you to get closer to what we're calling the edge because if, you know, it's important to be able to hand that traffic and be able to deliver it to, you know, as you've said, eyeballs um, in close proximity. So the more of these you have, the closer you're getting to that edge. Um, and for us, it's been important to um, to really deploy robustly with a distributed edge mm -hmm. and partnering with um, all of the CSPs. Mm -hmm. So me and Rashid have known each other for over nine years. Um, mm -hmm. And we've you know, worked not just with them, but globally with, with CSPs to, um, to make big investments on our end to get the content, to get closer to the edge. We deploy caches all around the world um, that bring and localize that content. So then we, ha we can avoid the types of issues he's describing where I'm like, wow, that's terrible. Like, that's definitely not going to enable the metaverse if people are sending traffic <laughs> from New York to LA for to come back to DC. Uh, that's uh, very far from, I think, where, we're, where we want to go. Um, where do we need to go? I think it's being defined. Um, as I said, if 30 years ago, if you went and talked to someone about the internet, would they have you know, predicted Instagram and TikTok and Uber. No, we were just happy if our web page loaded, you know, in less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so um, these future applications and even, you know, these 
ideas around the metaverse. We do know they will require um, not just edge, it's one part of a puzzle. Um, I think Rashid used the term ecosystem. That is, a, I'd say, a, a very you know, um, um, appropriate word to use because there is um, you know, fiber, you know, you know, as Marcelo's ref referring to fiber, cables, there's data centers. Uh, we need you know, more data center development. Um, data centers in developing countries, um, carrier neutral type environments. Um, there's the whole hardware side, so mm. processors. Um, how, how much compute can you put in a very small platform? How, how lightweight can any you know, headset you're putting on, on yourself, how small can that become? So there's so many pieces to this puzzle. It's, you know, it's um, edge is one part, um, but even with edge, you know, it will address at some point you know, latency, um, mm -hmm. but just as important is throughput. Yep. Um, so if you look at 5G, 5G's been a big step up from even you know, 4G LTE, but even with 5G, your download speed um, is, is really high, but what about upload? Um, with some of these metaverse applications, you may need to see more symmetry between um, you know, um, your upload and download. Um, so there's a lot, to, a lot of work to be done, yeah. um, and I think it's uh, going to take many industries. So it's not even just, you know, in this panel, we're talking a little bit about OTT, CSPs, but it goes way beyond, <laughs> beyond mm -hmm. all of us. And there's many industries, I think, that will contribute to you know this this future but it's really exciting i think it's going to open up lots of you know economic opportunities um, it's going to allow developing countries to play a bigger bigger role um, versus you know the last generation of the internet so i think um, it's an exciting time i think for us to to be um, be part of this very cool bj yeah uh, maybe i can kind of uh, add on to this uh, maybe even kind of demystify this low latency and edge cloud and meta right? You know, uh, one thing that probably we could learn from uh, from meta here is it's not tomorrow. Right? Metaverse is going to take time. There is lots of work by lots of industries, but it's not just edge cloud. Right? Edge cloud is just one piece of it, and it's the whole entire connectivity, the network. You know, the, give you a kind of a technical detail. Think about cash. And today, when people talk about edge cloud, they talk about CDN and cash. And yes, if you are watching a Netflix movie, you can buffer and you can click and, and you know you can buffer it and then you can play. That's fine. But if you want to have an immersive, interactive uh, action between two people, uh, you can buffer. It, it, there's no way you can buffer. So it's not just edge cloud. And the person could be in San Fran and New York. It's long distance. So you have to have edge cloud and the uh, and, and the network all working together to enable that immersive experience. And that is, today, a problem for lots of gaming. So if you think about, do we need to wait for uh, Metaverse or Edge Cloud? Edge Cloud is, Metaverse probably an application that needed this. But there are applications like gaming is huge. It needed Edge Cloud today. And, mm -hmm. and there's also a misconception about latency. Right? Like everybody thinks, what is low latency? How low it is low? Well, people are kind of go, no, like, oh, sub second, no. If you think about human, from us, our reaction time is 250 milliseconds. Like, that's the average human reaction time. So, can we get a 20 millisecond low latency connection? I think most of the telcos will say, yeah, if I put it in my CO and pause, I can get 20 milliseconds. 20 milliseconds is pretty good. Like, you know, just to give you some example, let's say auto, auto autonomous cars driving at 100 kilometers per hour, in 20 milliseconds, it would have just moved a couple of seconds. Centimeters, right? So 20 milliseconds is more than enough. We don't have to go crazy to get the edge to the cell towers and things. We can get some sort of edge cloud building now and talk to the game publishers. They will happy to move in and host their games. Okay, so that's, uh, I was just going to go there. So what's the application? And it sounds like games, right? I mean, because I, a lot of people talk about autonomous vehicles and it's, it's hard for me to talk about autonomous vehicles on a panel like this because I see so many barriers for that being the use case that leads us, right? Um, I think that's gonna run on a private network that's dedicated to the road. So 
<laughs> you know, who cares about interoperability and all that? that that's just my view. It maybe, maybe not. But some of the other applications, specifically gaming, right, seem to be actually wanting the performance today, right? So what is actually pushing, what's causing somebody to say that tromboning effect is terrible, I can't have that anymore? It's not autonomous vehicles. I, is it gaming? I don't know. Is that? Gaming is one of the major use cases today that all the CSP can take advantage of, right? I think, you know, I think we are talking about a developing world where uh, the, the whole region is underserved. Okay? If you think about Asia, Middle East, Africa, Latin, the whole region is underserved. And we, there are lots of opportunities to create an edge cloud by the telcos and go to the game partnership. They will have to have to move their game servers, at least some portion of them, closer to them. And also the, the gamers will be happy, because they are all struggling, all the gamers in this region. There are two million of them, two thirds of the gamers mm -hmm. live in those regions, right? And they are struggling. I think it's, a, it's an immediate opportunity. I can, I can testify latency is really important in gaming, because when my 13-year-old son is playing Fortnite, usually hear like him bang on his table, and then, and of course he has a headset on, he's talking to the other people he's playing with, and he calls it lag. So that's, that's what the kids call it these days. So I was like, wow, at his age, I didn't know about network latency, but, um, but I think he's relating it to, it's always his excuse for why his character was killed in Fortnite, <laughs> of is, course. Is, is lag. So that's uh, my experience with like, So latency does matter. So. Um, and I so, think so he'd, be, he'd be thrilled though with 20 milliseconds probably. Yeah. More than eight yeah. Right. So 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 game, so we think, I mean today, because the way I see it, and maybe this is too simple, but I see you know a push and a pull, right? So you see, you know, content being pushed out, and then content providers saying, hey, you know, I've got subscribers who are complaining about bad service in this region. I want to put a pop there let's get an internet exchange there and like, you know, the whole community comes together and builds this and this takes years, right, of course. So that's gaming and, and certainly can help seed the way. What do we see after that? Are we seeing anything else after that on the enterprise side? Marcello, yeah. Yeah, uh, I came across an example recently. Uh, I met a company uh, in LA uh, that actually, they work with defense, they work with the US Army and they're in a beta project to, uh, they're doing right, right now the training in the metaverse first, like basic skills. So rather than sending, I don't know, the US Army to somewhere in Nevada or in the desert in New Mexico somewhere, they start basic training in the metaverse. So it's saving. And then of course they will have the, the tech. So it's, you know, again, the mix of physical and uh, gamified uh, application, which not, not necessarily is gaming, but can be uh, anything mm -hmm. that people and enterprise or governments, they do uh, right now. Mm -hmm. Or even uh, they also do uh, virtual uh, meetings, uh, virtual round tables with proper avatar, and uh, so it's the same like if we're in this room. Right, and, and, and so, but I guess still that's, you know, some sort of content delivery application, not quite the immersive experience that we're envisioning, right? Yes. So, but, but you're seeing some non-gaming, I guess. Yeah, it's, okay. yes. Yeah. I, if, yeah, if I can elaborate in this direction. See, I will tell you something. The metaverse, the way it is being defined, I think it is not limited to only a certain kind of application. It will be like a, a and a definition that will allow to so many sectors and business and segments to be able to think and utilize it. Now, I want to elaborate more into the IX part. I mean, the, we should not uh, uh, eliminate the benefit of the IX, especially where when we do the edge, we still need to maintain the availability of connectivity and reachability. Mm -hmm. This is very much important. So uh, developing the network is part, or having the IX deployment, it's part of enhancing the reachability and uh, even to facilitate a cost-effective solutions uh, of a mesh networks. 
Uh, as a metaverse, I, I would like to take just a very few minutes that metaverse is not a destination that we need to reach. A metaverse is a journey. And that kind of journey is, is, is not going through a one direction. It's going into different directions. And those directions, it reflects the interest of each business owner. Even in the automobile, for example. Now, for you, before you buy a car, you need to visit a showroom. And you need to sit the, in the car. And you see the dimension of that car. Imagine you will get an application with probably the VR now, it's available somehow, it's big. I hope that Meta will be able to develop it in a very simple uh, kind of uh, glasses to be worn. That imagine that you will put something in your head or in your eyes, and you will be able to see the dimension of the car that you are interested in. And to feel even the, the kind of uh, sentimental that it impacts you to buy or not to buy. Metaverse, it's a very wide kind of a definition that will be somehow useful for so many applications to be used. Why gaming is taking the lead? Because gaming has, I mean, somehow went through enough period to attract so many users at a different kind of age and delivering a lot of segments being telecom application developers aggregators to put some money to reach to a level where we can see a lot of application make use of it even designers now we see some of those models designers are becoming into the the gaming uh, kind of promoting their stuff so I, I believe gaming is leading this for a while but it's a matter of time we will see so many applications. It is similar to the internet. It was very much led by self-broadcasting for a while, if we remember, sometime. But see what's happening now. So many things available in the internet. So it is just a journey that we need to feel so comfortable, but we need all, and this is something that, because of the time, I want, I want if we take a time to talk about the regulation and the responsibility that each one of us should bear, all of us, because it is, it is an opportunity for a new civilization to start. We, we don't want that civilization to start from scratch. We have enough experience, time, understanding, regulation, and feeling of kind of responsibility in this real world. We want to make sure we pass some of those to that metaverse world. Yeah. So just to close the loop, I think all of us are agreeing the metaverse is not gaming. So that's, if nothing else is taken away, it's like we all agree. I think longer term gaming will be a small portion of, you know, metaverse applications. Right. And for Rashid, his metaverse is for buying cars because he loves buying cars, <laughs> I know. Um, but even the workplace environment, mm -hmm. that will dwarf even the gaming use case for metaverse right. so imagine being able to like why wouldn't you want to have your meetings where it feels personal and you can be right next to the person not you know when i'm meeting with someone they might be in paris um and if we meet in the metaverse we can feel that presence um many industries will use it so healthcare i'm not going to say remote surgery everyone gets freaked out with that right. one but <laughs> Uh, you know, if, no, but, we, but we already absolutely see, telemedicine. Yeah, it's, telemedicine. It's, it's not a crazy thing, yeah, right? I it, mean, for education, it's just, it's going to open up so many possibilities. So earlier when I was talking about how it's going to change the economy because this is, this is a really good opportunity for new business ideas. So literally when you have a new technology, a new platform, um, you know, the next, you know, Facebook or Instagram or, you know, Microsoft, there's opportunity for, you know, the, there isn't any one company who, like, is, you know, the owner of this. It's right. like, it's Greenfield, um, so it's a good opportunity, I think, for even entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I don't want to contradict you, but I also want to get a different opinion. Like, the way that I see, who's going to build the first metaverse? Mm. That's the question. Like, that's going to be a gaming type publication, because if you look at any metaverse project out there, they're all related. The reason they're really going to get me, who is going to be the metaverse user? I don't think it's me. It's going to be my kids. And so, who 
who are they? Yeah, they're babies. So the way that I kind of see, the reason it's gaming and metaverse is kind of intertwined because it's the generation they're going after, they're gamers, and they're used to this kind of metaverse concept totally, whether it's Fortnite or Roblox or, or Minecraft. And the game companies have the experience of building this immersive experience doing it. So this is why I, kind of, I was kind of leaning towards to gaming is something that's going to take us closer to metaverse immediately. But yeah. yes, I agree that in the future, once things are there, there's the opportunities are endless, but that's the future. But immediately I see gaming as the kind of a gateway to the metaverse. Yeah. So it's interesting, right? I, so I see, I see it a little bit differently. Uh, I, I see that gaming and content is pushing, but I don't necessarily see the gaming pulling. I see private enterprise networks, like private networks on an enterprise campus, I see that pulling because they want to host that there. Maybe like an like a in-person gaming tournament where they'll deploy a private network and host some there. I see that pulling. But, but to me, I just see that for sure the gaming community is demanding more performance than any other community right now, right? And, and so therefore, or maybe call, you know, some, some video caching as well. Uh, gaming is not just playing games anymore, right? Uh, so if you look at gaming, it become an ecosystem, it become a lifestyle. Um, I have three kids, two of them don't play games, they just watch games. Mm. They, so if you look at gaming, I think it's defined as, as a lifestyle. Now. They buy gaming stuff, they have gaming mouse, gaming computers, so it's a lifestyle. And there are some playing, but lots of pulling as well. Like there's lots of content being generated. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people watch, like League of Legends had, the finals had almost close to the Super Bowl online viewership. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, Hannah's in So, yeah, it is. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think it, so I'm just talking about who's going to underwrite the far edge infrastructure. And, and that's really the question. And we don't know that yet. I, I, I think the, the sort of metro edge, I think we understand. There's a use case. Everybody sees that, you know, network uh, traffic taking long round trips doesn't make sense. We can solve that. Not that difficult, right? People have to play together, but it's not that difficult. What, creating a ubiquitous metaverse is tremendously difficult. Creating, you know, metaverse-like experiences in locations, I think it's available today, right? Almost, maybe not quite. Um, so, but, but, but anyway, I mean, all of this leads us to, to recognize that it's wildly complex, requires lots of participants, um, and, and I guess the question is that I'm going to put back to everybody for the last, uh, I guess we'll do one, one last comment here and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, how do we do this responsibly? What, what are we, as industry participants, what should we be caring about as we do this? Um, what don't we know? Or is that we can't answer? We should just <laughs> roll the dice. If, if, if I take it, I mean, uh, see. This is one of the concerns that very much I'm having. It. Yeah. But not as a telecom service provider. I mean, I mean, just as a kind of a person who are very much interested in this wave. Yes. That yes, what kind of the responsibility that the whole community should bear. Yep. Okay. Uh, because what we can see, guys, is very much important that our, as, as VJ say, our, our kids, our new generation will be very much involved in such kind of capability. Mm -hmm. It will be something that they're really, uh, somehow they will be attached with. Yep. This is what we see. Mm -hmm. We don't know the reality, how it will look like. So at, at such kind of capabilities and freedom, which is very much important, and there is something that I can see it's happening and very much we are towards it, which is the decentralization. The metaverse is very much leading the decentralization for everything. So when you are going from a very much centralized system to decentralized system, okay, what kind of, kind of responsibilities that should be applicable there? This is, I don't have the answer, mm -hmm. but I have very much a keen 
to see some kind of initiatives. And those kind of initiatives should not be taken individually. No. It should be very much driven, I mean, globally by some kind of institutions to put the right standard rules where every single element that will take a part of that metaverse being, a gl I mean, whatever era that should respect those, uh, I mean, kind of rules or standards. It's the same thing happening in the mobile. Yep. If you are a mobile operator, you cannot perform everything by yourself. If you are a CDN, you cannot do everything by yourself. There is kind of certain regula regulation standards that should be applied. Unfortunately, this kind of common standardization is, is not being cooked yet, which I would take the venue to call for such kind of things. Yep, I would agree. Standards are important, especially when we're decentralizing, right? There's so many new people coming into the market. Um, we have five minutes left, and I see questions populating the screen here. Um, maybe I'll just read them off, and if you guys want to jump in, uh, feel free. Okay, so the top question. Uh, Metaverse needs real-time infrastructure. It needs different ecosystem. Blockchain can solve this problem? <laughs> can blockchain solve this problem? Yeah, I, I think everybody looking at blockchain as a new thing. Uh, it's this decentralization. Uh, I, I'm, from, I'm a crypto guy, even though I'm in a gaming company. The biggest decentralized operating system or protocol today in place is TCP IP and UGP4, right? It is a decentralized protocol. We haven't run it in place, but all the telco was running it. So other than it's an inscription of blockchain, it's nothing new. Right? So it's not, is it going to solve? No. I, I think, you know, uh, uh, the project at TIP, OMF project, or, you know, credit to Meta for creating that TIP project, uh, those kind of open source uh, uh, ideas, open source collaboration, is probably going to solve the problem, infrastructure centralization. So that I would turn into that. Yeah, so, and, and you know, in terms of um, infrastructure, a uh, similar term to you know, decentralization is disaggregation. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we are seeing already, but I expect to accelerate. So this goes back to what the edge is today will be you know, different. Um, you okay. know, we're, as I said, took all those years to go from four peering points to you know, in the teens. Yep. Um, that will accelerate. There will be disaggregation as, as we see opportunities to get, you know, um, not just content, right, but even services, these immersive experiences closer to people. Um, but even that's going to not be any one, you know, participant or even one industry. Right. It's going to mean data centers, internet exchanges, you know, um, CSPs, um, MNOs. Everyone's going to work together, I think, to enable this. Yeah. It's fascinating because we need to look at the network, the compute, all as in the application as one, but we also need to disaggregate it. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, but we have to. I mean, it's the only way to get it done. Right? Disaggregate it and then each and individual company it. also further. Right. right. Yeah. Of course, yeah. you need to yeah. disaggregate it, do it most efficiently where it needs to be yeah. done, and then put it back together. <laughs> but if I, I can jump in, before yeah. you guys you were talking about outside the IX, right, that should be non profit and so on. So uh, this is a question that uh, myself also have. If we want to put together all these guys, the data centers, submarine, fiber, and of course the users, they give for granted, like the, your, your, your son, that they give for granted that there should be no lag on the game. There should be someone building this network, right? So how we can balance the uh, making internet and metaverse fair for everyone, but at the same time there must be guys that build networks, build data centers, they have engineering, and so on. So I think there is a gap there. Uh, because if, yeah, you know, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, but there are, where are going to be the money? Who's going to spend this money mm. to make this fair and with no profit if, you know? It's interesting, right. So, um, so OpenIX, right, we're a standards body and we publish standards, open standards for internet exchange points and data centers. Ostensibly, those are standards that someone would care about if they were looking to Put, net, you know, put traffic on that exchange or put gear in that data center. Um, but you're right, somebody still has to build the data center. <laughs> yeah. right? um, and, and ultimately, there has to be a use case for somebody to underwrite that. Um, 
and paying customers, right? So it, it is likely going to go and develop in the places where people can afford to pay for it first. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay, sorry, next question. How will, has this one we really want to deal with? How, how will no. the Middle East, recent changes, peace agreements, new country regulation will affect the metaverse world? That's for Rashid for it's, sure. Uh, <laughs> like it's really That's a whole other panel, guys. We don't Rashid have time for that. for the next half hour. <laughs> we have a private session. We will have world peace in the metaverse. <laughs> Done. Okay. Um, what, what do you think is the role of NFT Web3 world in the development of metaverse? Maybe I'll take that. Uh, okay. This is nothing new. Uh, if you're a gamer playing CSGO, buying a knife for fifty thousand dollars, and it, well, that's what it is, right? Like, now, for a gamer, it's nothing new. It's just, it's just you know, people are like kind of hyping about NFT. The whole skin, the skin trading, this has been there for. So this is just digitalization of those in the digital economy. We we just had it. Before. How much does it cost to make one of the shalai? Uh, nothing. It doesn't give you anything, but there's a knife for more than fifty thousand dollars. That's what I tell my son. Yeah. So, so this is this is not going to solve anything. It's just another version of the existing gaming digital economy. Uh, I, I will make it very simple to the audience to understand such kind of a question, which is very much important, and you can understand why this speculation is happening very much into the in, in NFT and Web3. See, when you are migrating from the real world to the metaverse world, the responsibility of copying right has no definition been for, performed yet. Means the responsibility of having the copyright now for the last 150 years being very much matured enough to protect your rights. But when you are going to the metaverse world, that kind of maturement is not yet exist. So when I'm giving you the NFT, is to define your identity, which is very much important. If you are interested, probably at our age, or at least my age, I don't see that much important for me. But for the new generation to have an identity, identity regulated and somehow sealed for him when he joined that metaverse world, it is very much important. So therefore, when you go there, you will be having an identity that's sealed. So the NFT will help you to do that. This number one. The Web3 is to maintain your copyright. So no more someone else will be taking the responsibility to use your data for his own benefit, being a person or a company. So the Web3 will give you the right to maintain your right for whatever kind of content you deliver, you develop, or you deliver it. I hope it is clear. Okay, I think we're out of time. We went over time. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks to all the panelists. Thank hey, you. Thank you, ITW. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eli, for the assured moderation there, and to Rashid, Marcello, Amar, and Vijay for taking part, um, demystifying the met metaverse to an extent, and sharing some real-life examples on, and visions of what the metaverse is and what the opportunity can be. I'd like to once again thank all of our sponsors for making this possible. And up next at the top of the hour, we have a panel discussion about the reality of never down infrastructure. So please stick around for that. Thank you, everyone. Take care.